Good evening, God saints, and welcome to Scott's Chapel Online Ministries. This is Pastor Fred, and we're going to get in tonight's uh, Bible study in John chapter 16, uh, verse 33, is the verse that we'll be looking at in our studies. You know, it's been some trying times, and the last four years has been crazy. And we're still in the midst of crazy. And I mean, every day there's just something collapsing, wrong. Uh, you just keep on living. Trouble will find you. Trouble, drama, and mess that's in our lives. So I wanted to do a study, a short little study on how do we handle mess. Handling mess is our subject for this evening. And I'm talking about because there's a whole generation now that people can't handle mess. If you look on the TV, the news, you'll see a lot of people with depression, uh, ads and for medication to help monitor the these things. You know, a lot of TV shows and movies showing the emotions and the emotional turmoil that people are going through of handling mess and when people become overwhelmed, even the simplest things becomes difficult. How do you handle it? What do you do in the midst of madness? What do you do to hang on by a thread? Uh, how did uh, we get over and get to the point to where we are? What are you doing? What are you doing to handle your situation? Many are hiding or they're going to emotional or shutdown or depression or they lash out or they stay angry all the time or there's no joy in your life and no peace. So let's look at what Jesus says. Verse 33 in John chapter 16. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Notice what he says. Jesus said, this ain't nothing new. I'm telling you this, that you are going to go through the same challenges and adversities as everyone. There's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes tells us that. Nothing new. Whatever is happening now has already happened. But he says, I'm telling you this so that you may have peace. Peace doesn't come from the absence of problems. Peace doesn't come that we have found a solution. Peace comes through Christ. He says, so that in me you may have peace. Then he says, in this world, in living, you will have trouble. Basically, it is what it is. You know, we're, we're thinking that because we're Christians, because we're saved, because we, racism doesn't exist, uh, gender uh, doesn't exist, all of these things, we can just sweep everything under the rug and tell the pink elephant in the room that, oh, everything's all right and we'll sing kumbaya. No, he says, you're going to have some mess happen in your life. Good, I don't, it doesn't matter whether you're good or bad, stuff happens. Stuff happens. So if stuff is going to happen, he says, I'm giving you some information. I'm giving you myself to help you deal with it. When you have my peace, you'll be able to handle the situations. But take heart, he says. I have overcome the world. And why would he say that? He says, because he is the solution to our problem. You know, pastor gets frustrated. That's one thing about me. I'm an honest pastor. 
I'm not going to sugarcoat something. I'm not going around with a halo on my head acting like I know everything and everything's all right and I'm always smiling. No, I'm not. I am not. I'm just like you. I put my pants leg on one leg at a time. I get angry. I get frustrated. You know, you try to do the right thing and boom, there it is. Something happens. And I mean, I quit asking for stuff because it's coming. But with that, I have to go back time and time again to rely on Jesus' peace that he gives. This frustration. Maybe you ain't been there. But a few people can give testimony that they have been frustrated at some point. Frustration is a real emotion. And all of us, no matter how holy or sanctimonious we may be, will be frustrated by life at some point of time. The community will frustrate you. Uh, the more you give, the more they try and take. The, the government the, will frustrate you. You pay taxes, Social Security, and then you get old, and they tell you the money has run out. Frustrated. You thinking you got insurance and the accident happens and nothing is paid for and it's uh, too much, and then they either raise your rates or drop you. Frustrated. You may not want to admit it, but even God can frustrate you. Yes, I, I, I know I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied my every groan. But sometimes my groaning is because I don't understand or like what God is doing or the way God is doing it. You know, the stuff like love your enemies. Frustrating. Turn the other cheek. Frustrating. Oh, just wait on the Lord. When it seems like the Lord is on TP time, frustrated. But Jesus says in this world, you are going to have frustration. You need to learn how to deal with it by giving it to me. So it's about seven things that I look at this particular verse and I see. We can overcome the drama in our lives by doing seven things. First is that we can overcome the drama in our lives by trusting in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, To trust in the Lord with thy, all thy heart, and lean not on thy own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. If you want to overcome whatever may come your way, you need to trust in the Lord that he is able to handle any mess any drama in your life. Secondly, we must, we can overcome by calling upon the Lord for help. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says to call unto me and I will answer and show the great things that thou knowest not. If you want to overcome mess, that may come your way. You need to get on your knees and call on the Lord in prayer because he is able to handle whatever mess you may be going through. Thirdly, we can overcome by obeying the word of God. Not only do we need to read the word of God, not only do we need to worship and study the Bible and study our Sunday school lesson and learn what the word of God says, but we need to obey the word of God so we can overcome the drama that will come into our life. James 1 and 22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We can overcome mess by resisting the devil. That's the fourth thing. James also says in the fourth chapter and seventh verse, 
Submit yourselves unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, the author of mess is the devil. The author of confusion, of drama that comes into our lives is him. He loves to tempt you to go places or do things that will bring nothing but mess in your life. When we are tempted by him to sin, we need to submit to the Lord. Calling on Jesus, praying, helping him, asking him to help us to overcome the temptation that the devil is trying to place on us. I don't care who you are. You can get to a point of frustration. You want to cut somebody out. Amen? You might need not need them. I need Jesus. I need Jesus from not going up on somebody's head. Amen? Fifthly, we can overcome by submitting to the Holy Spirit. I've learned in handling mess, you cannot do it in your own strength, in your own power, in your own will. You got to let go and let God. Well, what did, wait, 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 wait a minute, Pat. What does that mean? Submit yourselves unto God. Resist the devil, flee from him, and he'll flee from you. I, I have to submit. Uh, Romans 1, 12 and 1 says, uh, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you uh, to give your bodies, to submit your bodies unto God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, and God will accept you. A surrendered life is all about trust. Do you trust God enough with your life to just let go? Let him do it. If mess is going to happen, mess, is, mess happened to Jesus. If Jesus had to go through mess, what do you think you're going to have to do? He went through the same junk that we have to go through. He said, I went through this so that I can give you power and peace to move through your tribulations, through move through your mess. Six, we can overcome mess by letting go of certain people and things that bring nothing but drama in our lives. 1 Corinthians 5, 15 and 33 says, bad company corrupts good morals. Bad company. There's some things we just got to let go. You know, fire does not want to hang out with water. Light will not hang out with darkness. You know, if, if you are trying to do the right thing. You can't hang around crazy people. You got to let them go. You got to get rid of that mess. If you're hanging around folks that don't want to be nothing, ain't about nothing, ain't talking about nothing, ain't going to do nothing, why are you with them? Why are you around them? Light does not have anything to do with darkness. All that darkness will do, all those people will do, is bring bad mess into your life. Let it go. You know, I'm old. I am old school and old. I remember this R&B song by Teddy Pendergrass. I think you better let it go. Looks like another love TKO. You better let that mess go. Let those people go. Let those situations. There are some things and some habits that need to be laid aside if we're going to over, be able to overcome the mess that comes in our lives. Anything or anybody that hinders our relationship with Christ brings nothing but mess and steals our peace. And we allowed it to happen. It's just like you left the front door wide open. Get them out. Get rid of it. Let it go. And lastly, we can overcome mess 
by receiving Jesus into our lives. We receive Jesus into our lives by repenting of our sins. Repenting of our sins and believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for our sin and rose from the dead with all power in his hand. Acts 16 and 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You want to be saved from your mess. You want to be saved from your sins. You want to be saved from the same old, same old. Let go. Let God do it. Believe in the name of Jesus and do those things that he says to do in his word so that in him you will will have peace. So take heart. Jesus has already done it for us. God bless you. God smile upon you. And lastly, before we get on out of here, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you for hitting like. I hope it's love. Uh, write an amen. Put your comments in. Subscribe. Hit the notifications on there so that you can continually receive biblical teaching uh, in this type of format. Also, make sure you go to Giblify uh, and uh, give. We got Cash App also. Look that up in the description because uh, to handle the mess, we got to keep doing what God says do. One is we have to continually pray without ceasing. We got to Keep worshiping him and praising him through our pain. And then we must also give unto the Lord what is his. Amen. You're not giving the pastor money. You're giving God what he has required of us to do so that he can open up the floodgates of heaven and pour us out a blessing. Like I said, it's it's not for me. That's why I'm work third shift and I'm tired. Because you know what I'm finna do? I am finna eat and go to bed so I can go to work tonight and be up all night while y'all studying these scriptures. So love you, and I'll see you Sunday. Again, happy Sunday. Passed out.